This is a piece of round reed that I have taken out of the coil and it's very long. And I want it to be long so that I can twine around this base multiple times without having to stop and add more pieces. So I've made this about the middle and then I've taken my crimper tool or a needle nose, nose screwdriver, whatever you have. Not a needle nose screwdriver, a needle nose plier. Okay. Anyway, crimp that to break down the fiber. And then I'm going to start twining. I like to start on one that's underneath the rest of them. I never start on this last one. Okay, you can kind of see which ones are on top and which ones are on the bottom. So I have it crimped. I'm sliding this down. Now, if this were a much larger base with many more spokes, I could use a T-pin and put a T-pin through, through all these layers of spokes onto a foam board. Or I have seen some people that have actually used a block of wood underneath this and they put a tiny little nail through it. However, the way that I have learned to do this, I have never used any of those methods. I use the twine and turn method and I hold everything down with my left hand. So I'm starting this over here. Now you probably can see the little pencil mark that I put that right there. So I'm going to make sure that this is going to be on top of that pencil mark and then this one comes under. Now, I knocked this one kind of out of whack, so I want to move it back. So, again, the one that came under, I'm putting on top of that pencil mark. I'm going to hold it down with my finger. I'm going to put this one underneath, and then I'm going to turn. So, on top, this is the one that I had to make the adjustment on because it's the top one and there's more of this hump. So I am going to follow the pattern here of the way the pencil marks should be. So that goes under, touches the pencil mark, and held secured. Now you may want to go a little farther than what I did when I first started so that you can just get a few more. Then you can take this whole thing and turn it. So you go back up, match that pencil mark again, match that one, and see how you can move that back if it gets a little out of circle. And I can already tell I'm going to need to adjust it some, and that of course is because these spokes stack on top of each other. And so the pencil mark is a really good guide, however it is not the exact place. So I'm back to the beginning now and I go under like this. So I'm going to look over here and see what needs to be adjusted if anything. And that looks like a yeah, that looks like a fairly good circle to me. Now you might ask, well what if I don't like these spaces here? These little pie shapes? If you wanted to close these up much tighter, you could actually make your pencil marks way up here and twine around a much smaller circle and then you would just keep building out. So I'm going to keep building out this base and show you how to then twine and turn. So this is on top, it goes under. You pull it up to the edge. Just pretend like this is the pencil mark you're trying to secure it on top of. And a lot of times it's easier if you kind of hang your spokes over the edge of the table so that you can just go under them, but this works just as well. Don't ever take the end of your piece like this and try to feed it through. That is so awkward, and it's really not the way that <laughs> you want to try to do it. But I have seen people try that method before. 
basically just twine. Always keep in mind that when you get back to that loop, that's where you're going to be ending it. This will get twisted, as you've seen, every now and then, about every five or six folks, depending on how long this is, you might have to just put your fingers through and pull it. If it gets twisted, don't ever try to untwist it like this, like you might a piece of string or chain, because it will break. You shouldn't have any spaces in between these rows. So I'm going to do it here and show you what it should not look like. It's, it's kind of hard for me sometimes, but I'm going to do it anyway. Okay, so let's say I wasn't paying attention and I just kind of went, nah, da, 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 da. okay, that's not good, but I'm just going to take each piece and I'm going to tighten that. You can't go very far and still be able to get away with doing that. Only two or three rows. So you must get this tight right up against that last row as you go around. Or, guess what? You will have an egg-shaped bottom instead of a round bottom. And that blows the whole purpose of this basket. I'm almost to the end. And the reason I have determined that I'm almost to the end is because I'm going to look at these spokes and see what kind of spacing I have. And so if I turn these up and start weaving, that is going to be the amount of space I will have. And that's about the amount of space I'm going to want for what I'm going to do here. So I go back to the beginning and... This one right here, where I started, I'm going to clip that off. I'm going to go here and clip this off. Then I'm going to crimp that with my crimper to break down the fibers so that it won't break. And then this one, I'm going to do the same thing. And I'm using my little tool this time. My big one is okay, but... The little one was handy. So I turn that sideways to make more space in there and then just push it in. And then I'm going to take this one and push it in there. So in the next the next session I'm going to show you how to turn up the sides of the basket and start weaving.